Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus. I am very excited. Let's jump right back into it, shall we? And as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I'm going to be shortening my videos just a tad. It's good they're going to be about 10 to 12 minutes a piece from now on. That way I'll be able to get more content out to you guys more quickly. And I'm not going to make the same mistake of hitting start like I did last time. I'm going to go to load. And quick saves shall be. There we go. Alright, I was in the uh, cafeteria with Rune. We're looking for my room key. <clears throat> Alright, let me get in character here. <clears throat> I think that the, I think that going to the reception desk is the only option you have. I say nothing, but I know that he is right. I walk up to the window next to him and lean on the windowsill. The sun already hid behind the clouds again, and the snowfall still continues. I look sideways and see Rune looking through the window at some point in the distance. He must have noticed me looking, though, because he turns towards me. What's up? Well, I guess I can ask him. I'll thank him. I'll thank him. I'll thank him. Just thinking about how nice it was of you to help me. The snow forms white caps on trees and covers everything in sight. If I opened the window, cold arctic wind would bring some inside too. I could extend my arms and watch how the snowflakes melt in my fur or get stuck between my whiskers. Thank you for coming here with me. I was really starting to panic when I noticed I've lost the key. It's no problem at all. I like helping others. At least the ones I like. So he likes me. I knew he couldn't come here with me if that wasn't the case. But it is nice to hear it anyway. He comes up to me and he sends his paw, petting my head. His paw is gentle, much more than I thought a basketball player's paw would be. This feels really nice, and I don't want him to stop. But of course, this lasts only a second, and his paw is gone from my hair. Come on now, we should talk to the receptionist. I nod, and we both leave the empty cafeteria in silence, heading towards the entrance of the building. I tap my paw pads on the counter nervously. The closer we are, the closer we are to talking to someone from the staff, the more nervous I get. Having Rune here helps. Having Rune here with me helps a bit. I glance sideways and see him leaning on the wooden counter, deep in thought. He notices me looking and turns towards me, too. Don't worry, everything will be fine. He gives me an earnest smile that could melt ice. Before I have a chance to reply, the janitor emerges from the utility room. She's a wolf of an ambiguous age. Could have been 30, as well as 50. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try and do this as well as I can. God, that her dad. Vatringer, do help med. I think she said, good day, how may I help you? Um, God, that her I lost the key to my room. I went to look for it around the guest house, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Did anyone find it and return it here? Did anyone find it and return it here? The janitor smiles at me reassuringly, completely in phase, and I start to suspect that I'm not the first one to lose the key to the room in this guest house. No, not yet, unfortunately. Did you leave the guest house after you got the key? No, I didn't. So it still has to be somewhere in the guest house. I will keep my eyes open. Let's not assume it's gone. Your name and room number, please. Carvin, room number 17. The janitor opens some ledger, and meanwhile, Rune leans in and whispers. See? Everything will be fine. Your room is a single one, so we don't have a second key for it. I'll call the office to get the spare key so, th so that you'll be able to access your room in the meantime. She takes an old flip phone out of her pocket and dials a number. Someone on the other side of the line picks it up quickly, and a muffled voice escapes from the small speaker. A janitor puts the phone to her ear and starts to explain the situation, and I switch my attention from her to Rune. I get pretty worked up over this, didn't I? But I'm feeling but I'm feeling fine now, in a huge part thanks to this guy. I don't think that he was lying when he told me that he likes me. I mean, why would he? But everything about this situation still feels surreal, like a dream. A lot of different thoughts are swirling around in my head now. Maybe I am still sleeping now. Maybe I came back to the dream from before somehow. Probably not, because Rune is not in jock straps now, but in brown trousers and a jacket. If this was a dream, it'd be a pretty mundane one. My mind would do better than that. Are you sure you want to wait for me here? Rune leans in closer and looks me straight in the eyes. Corners of his mouth curved upside in a slight smile. Garvin, 
You worry way too much. Blockart? Have I made a duel? Blocked? I switched my attention back to the janitor, sensing troubles. She speaks with an urgent tone, too fast for me to understand her beside the some single words. She ended the conversation with a simple hadet and put down the phone with a sigh. It looks like somebody from the office will be able to make will be able to make it here. Looks like nobody from the office will be able to make it here today. We weren't prepared for the snow to start falling so early this year and in such amounts. I said that they will come tomorrow morning. In the meanwhile, I will I will look for your key. For today, you will have to move to another room. We don't have any single rooms left, unfortunately, but I can show you which rooms have a bed still available. We have a lot more double rooms and single ones, so most of the students got a room with a second bed. But maybe one of your friends still has a free bed in their room? You could ask them if no one will have them will have one. You can blah. But if but if none will have one, then come back here and I can find you something big. I can find you something. Jesus, where'd that big come from? She gives me an unapo she gives me an apologetic smile and points to a small basket on the counter filled with sweets. Maybe you want some? I shake my head, looking down at my paws. I don't really know what to say. That's a very sudden turn of events. I have so many questions that I don't even know I would even know which I should ask first. Swallowing saliva, I finally decide on the one that concerns me the most right now. All my stuff is already in my room. I won't be able to retrieve anything from there until tomorrow. Oh, you're right. Wait a moment. She walks off to the utility room and returns after a short while, carrying something in her paw. Here's a bathroom kit for you. We always keep a spare few for those who forget to bring their toothbrushes or soap with them. She passes me the kit, all packed inside a cloth pouch. We're really sorry about this. Can I do anything else for you now? I shake my head. If you, ha if you will have any questions or problems, please come back to me and I will try to get it sorted out. I'm not going anywhere, although by midnight I usually am asleep already. Okay, I will keep that in mind. Talk. Thank you. She smiles at me, turns around, and returns to the utility room. Rune, all, Rune looks at me with concern. Uh, what are you going to do now? I don't have an answer to his question. I don't have any idea what to do now. Apart from finding another room to stay, of course. I need to think. I'll go outside for a moment and maybe take a short walk. Okay, I'll let you think alone then. I promised Devin that I will go keep him company in the swimming pool, so I'd better go too. I can't help but feel a grow but uh, but feel a growing uncomfortable feeling in the pit of my stomach, an unbearable loneliness. I actually hoped that Room would suggest that I could move to his room for tonight, but we've just talked for the first time just an hour ago. He was already so kind to me and helped me a lot, and would not be okay for me to ask any more. I don't even know if he has a free bed in his room. I doubt that he has a roommate, because he was sitting alone with Coach at lunch. But he might have a single room like me. Despite that, I am still feeling down. Oh! Wait, you don't have anything warmer than this with you do, don't you? I shake my head. All my belongings, apart from my camera and now this prized bathroom kit, are back in my room. But I'll be fine. I won't be there for long. Are you sure? That flimsy scarf alone won't fend off viruses. I'll agree with him. You might be right. Catching a cold at the very beginning of the camp would be a shame. I'll take a walk around the guest house instead. Now, now, I have a coat that I certainly won't need in the pool. Ha. Ah, that was a yawn while I was talking. That was weird. Okay. Come with me. Rune starts walking without looking back. I stand there, rooted to the stop, to the, to the spot I'm standing in, processing his words. Wait! I finally start walking, following him to his room. We walk along the corridor and Rune stops before one of the doors. Room number six. He takes out, he takes a key out of his pocket, opens it, and enters the room. Through the open door, I can see most of his room. It seems a bit smaller than mine, and there is only one bed, as big as the one in my room. So even if he wanted to, he couldn't let me move here. I thought it comforts me, even though it didn't solve any of my problems. Here you are. You can hang on to it until at least dinner. I won't need it before then for sure. Oh, nice artwork. Rune hands me his coat, and I put it on right there. It's a trendy-looking black parker from the south face. It's too big for me, obviously, but it's warm and comfortable, soft and fluffy on the inside. That should do. You look good in it, you wild tiger. Croon snickers, watching me with his arms crossed, leaning against the door frame. Thank you, Rune. I really appreciate it. See you later. See ya. 
He winks at me and closes the door after him. Oh, what a day. Well, my head is busy with different thoughts, I already got back to the lobby. The janitor lady is again at the desk, so I greet her again. I turn around and go through the entrance door, leaving the warm and cozy guest house. A wave of cold arctic air hits me when I exit the building, making me shiver, still snowing relentlessly. Chill wind blows through the tree branches like a harpist gently pulling strings. Our bus has left already, so the janitor's car is the only one standing in the front parking. I hope that the bus driver made it to the town without any problems. I walk through the parking lot and into the woods, leaving a trail of deep paw prints in the fresh snow behind me. I inhale deeply. The air is perfectly clean and full of smells, pines and wet moss, snow and needle-covered paths. I grew up surrounded by forests. I always loved exploring them. Some of the smells here don't seem familiar, but I still feel at home here. The only thing I hear is the sound of the snow crunching under my paws and the slight whisper of the wind. I am just on the edge of the woods, so the forest here is not dense here, and in between the branches I can see the gray sky hanging heavy above me. It feels good to be here. Living in the city, it's easy to forget how nice it is to be surrounded by nature. I take out the instant camera I still have with me from my bag, turn it on, and, holding it in my extended arms, I point the, I point the lens at my snout. Now I have to wait for it to develop. I stash it away quickly in the bag, together with the camera, and close it. I close my eyes and listen to the wind. I silence my thoughts and switch my attention to my surroundings. Deep breaths now. In and out. Slowly. I stand still. The wind rustles the branches, blowing off the slowly accumulating snow from them. Right now, the forest is still, but everything around me is brimming with life. All the bugs in the ground, all the trees around me, every tuft of moss and blade of grass. They all breathe together with me, in a steady rhythm. I'm happy where I am right now. I open my eyes and I shake off the snow from my snout. And that, my dear listeners and watchers, is where I'm going to stop it for right now. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little notification bell. And until the next video, enjoy the little things in life. Take some time for yourself. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.